reaction trailing the federal government's now decision to, to penalize message. the British Broadcasting yeah, Corporation and the Daily Trust over their documentaries on terrorism and banditry in Nigeria. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed on Thursday, said that the news outlets are irresponsible for giving their platform to terrorists to show their faces as if they are Nollywood stars and Only assured Nigerians. Nigerians that they will pay a penalty for the naked glorification of terrorism and banditry in the country. On Monday, in a 15-minute documentary titled The Bandit Warlords of Zamfara, the BBC Africa Eye provided insight into the mindset of terrorists operating in Zamfara, while in March, Daily Trust Only TV, in an arm of Nigeria. the Daily Trust newspaper, published a special report and documentary which exposed major issues around banditry in Nigeria. Let's take some tweets. This is from Boyega, who wrote, In other climes, the journalists get a word. But under a failed APC government, they get sanctions. This journalist did what the whole of security agencies cannot do. In fact, they gave intelligence report to security agencies. They deserve awards. Well, Ronald wrote, I haven't seen a government that is so adamant on self-destruction as this one, rather than take the positives from these publications and use them as pivot in ensuring the that the war on insecurity is won and peace is restored to the nation. They are here threatening sanctions. Now, wow. well, Kerud, one of the girls in the documentary said she misses school and hopes to be back someday. A government misses all that part and is more concerned with sanctioning. Not even a thank you to the people that risk their life through the expose. Well, in the meantime, ace journalist Kadaria Ahmed described the BBC documentary as irresponsible reporting. In an opinion article published on Thursday, Ahmed said that the BBC documentary fell below journalism best practices and is against public interest, arguing that if terrorists were killing and kidnapping British citizens, especially young children, the BBC would not enable interviews by the perpetrators, particularly if they were still roaming footloose and fancy free without an iota of remorse for their crimes. She insisted that the news outlet may be charged with aiding terrorism because Nigeria it provided a platform for terrorists to express their extreme views. Do you have like a comment from you? This is really interesting. The other day I talked about Sean Penn, the Oscar-winning actor, when he went off to interview, what's that man's name now? That awful El man, Chapo remind me. Man. El Chapo, the Sinaloa head. Mm -hmm. That man imported 500 tons of cocaine into America. He murdered, he tortured. Sean Penn went and interviewed him and was heavily criticized. That if you, El Chapo at the time was a fugitive from justice. Contract. That if you had the contacts to find him, why not turn him over to the authorities? Why go and interview him and get this scope? I yes. think it was for the Rolling Stone. And the journalist and writer, Robert Fisk, got the same criticism when he went to interview Osama bin Laden in 1998. Osama bin Laden was public enemy number one in America because that was the year of the bombing of the U.S. embassies in Dar es Salaam and Nairobi. And Robert Fisk saw nothing wrong with going to interview him. Now, no charges were laid against those journalists. Some people said it was immoral, and they do have a point, but it's not illegal, so they were never charged. So this is what you now have to decide. At what point is it reportage? At what point is it glorification? Now, I watched it twice, and I found it extremely chilling. But I, like the, I guess I tend to think Nigeria. in the same way as the people that were tweeting, those tweets that you shared. Yes. We are not oh my, oh my. vulnerable to radicalization. We are going to watch it and get information from it and be scared, which also is an aim of terrorists to scare us. I was frightened. But we're not going to be radicalized. There are some people who will watch that documentary, especially the parts where there was one man that was talking about how Fulani people have been treated. And they'll think, yes, actually, we've been treated really badly. Yeah. And they will be radicalized. It's my argument against Twitter. I remember back when everybody was joining Twitter. I wouldn't, because I just thought this platform is allowing itself to promote ISIS. Mm -hmm. There were so many videos. There was so much radicalization. And the Obama administration, which I think is the note that the Nigerian government should take, decided to counter that by showing what these people actually are, so that they are not glamorized in any way, showing the kind of suffering. And that drove the Twitter traffic towards ISIS accounts down considerably. They had to have their own counter message, which I think is what the Nigerian government should do. But in terms of sanctions, yes, there are sanctions right. that could be imposed, including fines of up to 20 million naira, yeah. including suspension of those broadcasters. So we'll see which way they well, the decide to go. The federal government needs to do a lot of things differently. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Hello, great people. Hello, great people. Freedom fighters, lovers of freedom are great people all over the world. You are welcome once again on IPOB Rapture Media under the leadership of Mazin Nandi Okukano, where we always set the record straight. I still remember Mazo Kenna Okechuku, known as the Biafran child watching again. The general. Now you begin to understand. Are you now begin to pay attention that Nigeria belongs to Fulani people? Are you begin to understand it that Nigerian belongs to Fulani? But like something I always let our people understand, if they have forgotten, I want you to understand that 1914 amalgamation, Nigerian amalgamation have expired. Nigeria was built on fraud. The foundation of Nigeria was built on fraud. That is why you can see all these shenanigans going on in that contraption. Killing and maiming. Destruction. Coming upon the indigenous people that find themselves in that contraption called Daminibuzu. Now you begin to understand. And I hope every one of you listening to the news in detail. For you to know that Fulani that are coming from Senegambia, coming from Chad, in jail, from Sahel, have taken over your land. Listen to me whenever I keep on shouting on top of my voice, and some people will come on my sec comment section, begin to write nonsense. I call it jargons, telling me that I don't have a job, that I should go and look for a work. I want you people to understand the work that I'm doing to sanitize our people. It's the one of the best jobs that I have already chosen. And I have found myself in this port. And I can never stop on this quest of self-determination. For our people to be free. For mental slavery. And physical slavery from Fulanin. Heading by Meati Allah. They are all terrorists. Now they want to do documentary about the terrorists in Zamfara. Terrorist warlord in Zamfara. Now they don't want to allow them. Now you begin to understand that BBC are nobody. They are about to sanction BBC and order to face sanction from federal government. BBC and orders to face sanction from federal government. Now you begin to understand that BBC are nobody. Only in Africa they listen to this idiocy of BBC. Only in Africa. Now you begin to understand that BBC, they are nobody. They are just disinformation. They are criminals. Now you begin to understand that BBC has no mouth in that contraption. Now you begin to understand that any time that I'm telling you about Islamist Wahhabism slash jihadist terrorists is real. These people are coming with ethnic cleansing. They have sophisticated weapons and assorted rifles. They have already have their foot soldiers everywhere in that contraption. But some of you don't, don't even understand the mess that we are into. That is what I'm bringing to you all. That if Nigeria can survive 2023, all of you are gone. I repeat again. If Nigeria survived 2023, all of you are gone. Believe what I'm telling you. This ethnic cleansing is real. Wahhabism is real. Jihadism is real. Holy War called Conquest. This thing that is a something they have been planning for years. Even though during their great-grandfather, Usman Danfodio. This is a war that they must carry. This is a war they must, they must fight. This is the agenda of, you know, controlling everything that you have. Taking over your land by fire, by force. Whether you love it, whether you like it, whether you dislike it, it's none of their business. They are coming with ethnic cleansing. And these people love to share blood. They always put fear in everybody. Now you begin to understand that fulanization, Islamization is real. Let me explain it more better to you people before I will go into the news in detail. Fulanization of that Nigeria is real. Taking over your land is real. Remember what their great grandfather said. Nigeria is their father's great grandfather's island. Now I want you people to, I want to bring this news in detail that Lai Lai Mohammed, 
the information minister and culture or I don't know what the position that he's occupying but this man can lie he can lie against that people now he don't want them to carry the documentary of the terrorists of their brothers in that contraption this is their brothers those Boko Haram you are seeing today Mayati Allah would they, they claim that they are bandits, but we are telling the world that these people are terrorists. There is nothing banned deed about them. There is nothing about banned and deed that you can get from these people. These people are real terrorists. They are coming to kill and destroy and take over your land by fire, by force, whether you like it, whether you believe it. I keep on telling my people, 99 constitution have said it all. 99 constitution have said it all. That Fulani must come and they must conquer. That is what he believe. They must conquer. But we are telling them their last bus stop will be in Piafra land. Their last bus stop will be in Piafra land. They will come in our land. They will never find a way to go back where they, are, where they came from. That is what we are promising them. We don't care about other people. But I want you people to understand that as you people have listened and understood every single thing that these people are saying, that to show you that these people are real, these conquests are real, Islamization are real, coming with ethnic cleansing, it does not matter who you are. It does not matter where you belong to. They are coming for you and there's nothing you can do about it. Islamist Wahhabist sludge had his terrorist is real conquest called holy war is real they have their foot soldiers already there and there's no how you can stop them make sure that you circulate this news to people so that they will understand that we are coming to tell you the truth great people good day and welcome